Hi everyone, it's Sherry. I hope that you are having a wonderful day. Y'all, today I have a very useful organization idea that's working for me and it might help you. Stay tuned. I don't know about you, but I am never done with organizing. I'll always look at something and think, can I do it a little bit differently? And in this case, for me, the answer is yes. Welcome to my channel. I am so glad that you decided to stop by. Welcome to all of my new subscribers and to all of my new friends. Welcome back to all of my longtime subscribers and longtime friends. Thank you guys so much for the wonderful ways in which you support me and my channel. If you've been with me for a while, you know that I have a lot of Project Life cards and those cards come in very large boxes and you get two sizes. You get the three by four and the four by six, but they take up a lot of space. So I decided that I was going to reduce the footprint of those Project Life boxes from this size to this size. I'll give you a closer look in just a minute, but y'all know what time it is. It's time to make it. So here's the size of just one of the Project Life boxes that I have. I like that it's a nice chipboard box, but it does require a lot of storage. Now I bought these years ago at Tuesday morning and I stocked up because I really like to use the cards as embellishments or for the fronts of cards. But when you open it, you're able to see just how much you get in here, but also how large this is. So what I'm doing today is I have decided to take those three by four cards and place them in a desktop box or a shelf top box, however you want to do it. But you can see just how nice and organized this is. So when I'm looking for a card, I simply need to go to this box to find the card that I want. Now me being me, I'm color coding my boxes. So I know that in this box, if I happen to be looking for black, white, gray, or brown, it's going to be right here. And today we're going to take what I'm calling my oranges and my yellows, and we're going to create a box for it. This box, I labeled it, etc., using some of those Tim Holtz chipboard word stickers because it's a bunch of this and a bunch of that. This particular box is all about traveling and adventure and embracing life. So we are going to label this one as my little curiosity box. And you're going to see just how easy it is to make this nice little chipboard box. And I am making it as a chipboard box because I like the longevity that I get from chipboard. And I like the nice professional look that it gives to this box. Everything about my little box is nice and crisp nice, crisp, clean looking box. So here's what we're going to need to make it. So I'm using some scrap chipboard. I have one piece that is four and one eighth by three, two pieces that are two and seven eighths by four and one eighth, and two pieces that are two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. So you can see that I am able to take advantage of some scrap that I have in my stash. And then I have a piece of orange and white striped cardstock and this measures nine by 10 and an eighth. Then I have a piece to line my chipboard and I'm using a 12 by 12 inch piece, but you can pull out scraps if you want to take advantage of your scraps. And y'all, this really is going to be a very quick and easy project because we're going to take the piece that measures nine by 10 and one eighth, and we're going to score at three on all four sides. So that's three on all four sides. Then we're going to fold and burnish all of our scores. And isn't this paper just gorgeous? Then I'm going to take my finger blade. We go to that intersection and we're going to cut straight down like this. And then I'll angle. Over here, we do the same thing, cut straight down and angle. Rotate it this way, cut straight down and angle. On this side, cut straight down and angle. 
then I'm just going to reduce all four of these just a little bit because we really don't need all of that extra paper. And now y'all, we can put our box together. Not a hard process at all. So let's take some glue and I like to use glue on my boxes and the reason why is glue is much more permanent than tape. Over time, your tape, depending on the type of tape that you use, it can break down. I've never had that problem with my glue, so I am using glue. But you use whatever it is that you have access to. And the glue that I use is Reptile. And those of you who've watched me for a while, you know that the Reptile does dry clear. I'm just going to go ahead and put this together and I'm just making sure that my corners are nice and crisp. And I'll go ahead and do this one as well because when you're making a box you want to make sure that those corners are nice and crisp and all professional looking. So now we'll go ahead and do that last one. And I'll go on the inside, get this nice and stuck. And y'all, as you can see, we do have a box, but for me, this is not a very sturdy box. Not for holding my cards like this, because if I put my cards in, the cards have a lot of weight to them, and the paper does not. So the cards, over time, are going to wear on this paper and are going to cause the box to maybe become misshapen. Your sides might bend out just a little bit, but we're going to take care of that. So I am going to bring in my 12 by 12 inch piece, and we're going to start with the piece that measures four and one eighth by three and we're just going to place that right there at the top like that so now we're going to take our two pieces that measure two and seven eighths by four and an eighth and when we place them down we're going to place them down and try to place them down on this line on one of our lines because I'm going to use that as my guide for how I cut but if you don't want to use striped paper and you're going to do the overlap, I have about an inch overlap there. So I'm going to take this piece, put it right next to it, and lay it down. Then I'm going to take my two pieces that measure two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths, and we're just going to place those right there. and right there and so now I'm just going to trim out all of my pieces and I'll show you how I'm trimming them down here because I'll be using the same process So on these pieces here, I am just going to cut at the edge like this and remove this piece. And I'll do the same thing over here. So you can see that when I get to the edge, I'm just angling and I'll remove this piece. And then I'll do the same thing over here. Remove that piece. Same thing here.
remove that piece and then the piece that is four and an eighth by three we are just going to trim it out all together. Then we're going to take this piece that is four and one eighth by three, place it in your box to make sure that it's going to fit this way and this way. And I can see that it is. So at this point, I am going to take some glue Make sure I get my glue in the corners. We'll put it in and we'll place it down. Then I'm just going to go in and make sure that I have a nice stick on this. Then on these pieces, I'm just going to cut across the line on all of these. Basically, they are the same width. If you are not using striped paper, give yourself about an inch overhang. But I am using a striped paper, so I'm following the line and using the line as my guide. Now I can take this, stand all of these up like this. And I'm just going to put these in with glue, but before I do, I want to make sure they're going to fit, and that does fit. So I am going to take some glue. We're going to take this piece, and I'll just take it, and I'm just going to slide it in and out like that to sort of spread that glue out. Then I'll place it on its side, go in, and get that nice and stuck. Now I can take my glue, place some glue there, fold this over like that, and let's get that stuck. Then we'll take this piece, we're checking it to make sure that it's going to fit, and it is. And I don't know if you can notice, but this box is already starting to really get sturdy. We'll take this piece, slide it in and out like we did the other, put it in, use my bone folder, go in and get that nice and stuck. Now I'll take some glue, place that glue there, fold over, and let's stick it. Now we're going to take the two pieces that measure two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths, put those in to make sure they're going to fit, and they are. Let's add that glue. Slide that in and out. Get that nice and stuck. and fold over. We're going to take our last one, place it in to make sure that it fits, and then we'll take some glue, and we'll put that on like that. Take this piece, put it in, kind of smush that glue around just a little bit. And then let's go in, get it stuck. Place our glue right here. Simple little box, y'all, but it just makes all the difference in the world to take the time to do this little extra step, for me anyway. 
And so y'all, there is our sweet little three by three by four and an eighth inch box. We can take our Project Life cards and just put them in like this. Let's see how many we can get in here. Hopefully all of them. I think on this one I'm going to have just a little bit of room left. Oh yeah, I was able to get all of my Project Life cards in. And you can see that on this one, I have a little bit of room left. So y'all, I'm able to flip through, find the card that I might want to use on a particular project, pull it out, and there we have it. Y'all, this is just an easy peasy, great little way for me to reduce the size of those Project Life boxes from the big box to these. Now I'm going to take this chipboard piece that says Curiosity and we're going to use that because this Project Life card is about adventure seeking, being curious, never stop learning, all of that. And so there, now I have one for my adventure, my curiosity, my wandering, my seeking, all of the above and then I have this one that is for this and that and I love the word etc because every time I hear that word and every time I use that word I think of Yul Brynner in The King and I etc 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 absolutely love that movie it's one of my favorites so I was thrilled to be able to put this word on one of my boxes but guys I hope that you have enjoyed this fun super easy way to reduce the footprint of some of the things in your craft room by building custom boxes just for those items. And y'all, this is a custom box. This is one of the best fits that you'll probably find on a project like this. So if you have enjoyed this project, and y'all, I certainly hope that you have, please hit that like button. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join this amazing online crafting family. You guys, as always, please be safe, be kind, be the reason someone smiles today. Happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.